Get ready for some great music and great stories. Band in Seattle starts right now. Welcome to Band in Seattle. I'm Xander Denke, and with me is Aaron Roden, creator of the Air Raid podcast on MyNorthwest.com and CairoRadio.com, to talk about tonight's band, The Young Evils. The Young Evils is the brainchild of Troy Nelson, who doubles during the day as a DJ on the popular radio station KEXP. The band started out as a light-hearted Vaseline's-inspired pop duo with Troy and his now wife, Mackenzie Mercer. After some twists and turns, the band expanded to add the Helgeson brothers, Scott and Brendan, on bass and drums, and guitarist Michael Lee. Their driving sound mixed with Mackenzie's vocal melodies creates a sound you'll definitely remember. So stick around. We'll be right back with The Young Evils. My name is Troy Nelson of The Young Evils, a band here in Seattle, Washington. We're at the lovely Easy Street Records, and I also work at KEXP radio station in Seattle. Death come black hole caught in your glory, love is like a death always looking for me, vision of myself stretched out flat out on the pavement. Cat call kid switched on like an A-bomb pair of racing lights on that an Renegades, the story is just very much like teenage love and trying to run away from people who are trying to put them down. I just picture like two 16-year-old kids with leather coats and knives in their boots. They went and hacked our hearts in two. They're having it out. And now I'm only half in love with you. Let's find our way out. first two records that I started listening to all the time were uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller and uh, Twisted Sister's Stay Hungry. And I would stare at the Twisted Sister album cover and just turn it around and it was just wild because this guy had this crazy hair and makeup and he had this bone and, uh, and the music was amazing. And then uh, my next right after that was Billy Idol. It's like he was like my hero when I was eight years old. Love's like renegades on crusades, cavalcades on raids, and they're having it out. Uh, they went and hacked our hearts in two. They're having it out. And now I'm only half in love with you. Let's find our way out. My mom was one of those moms who made me take piano lessons. That's how I learned some theory and some, uh, some structure chords, like the C chord and then to an F, that sounds good. And so mixed with theory and just my own mind, definitely piano lessons helped. But then when I started playing guitar and started wanting to write songs, really Metallica and Nirvana and then 80s music. That's me in a nutshell, even to this day, it hasn't changed. They're having it out and now is now, we started out as kind of a duo, and now that it's a band, she also has moved forward. Uh, she's the young in the young evil. She's the young, I'm the evil, really, because she's, you know, 10 years younger than me, 11 years younger than me. Setting Sun is currently my favorite song to play. It's like an exercise, like the getting to deliver the vocal in that song is a workout in a good way. When I was I think between the ages of like 17 and 20, all I wanted was to get to be in a band. I just wanted to sing for a band or play in a band, um, and I didn't really know how to make that 
possible until I met Troy and he approached me about doing it. It's been the best thing in my life for five years. a really great show, um, it feels better than any drug that you could take. You sort of don't feel like individual people anymore, you just kind of feel like one entity and, and um, everyone's sort of like elevating to another, another plane. I think I will probably spend forever pursuing that feeling. We'll be right back with more from the Young Evils. Kenzie and I met at the wonderful Easy Street Records. She just started, she was this new, new gal. And she was just goofy. She was interesting to me. And we just instantly started hanging out and talking. And anytime she'd show up to work, I'd get excited. And anytime I showed up, she'd be like, and then we'd just gravitate towards each other. And Somebody better come when I'm calling out for love. It's time to finally see. I think I met Trey on my like second or third shift and I was working on one side of a CD wall and he walked by on the other one and he just like pointed at me from across the CDs and he was like, who do people tell you you look like? I was like, what? He was like, like someone famous, who do people tell you you look like? And I was like, I don't know, he thought I looked like Shannon Doherty and which I still don't see. but. It just like he's so memorable and it left such a big impression and over the next couple days we just like got to know each other and I think on like our third day of working together he just said I don't know what it is about you but I feel like I'm gonna know you for the rest of my life. I just, she was just the girl I worked with that I thought was fun. And then she walked by me and she was singing a Heart song. And it, cause Heart was playing in Easy Street and she walked by humming it and I could hear that she was in tune. Like she, she had good pitch. I was like, you can sing? She's like, yeah. You know, she's shy. She was really shy about her voice back then. It's like, oh, how did I not know that you could sing? And so he just gave me a CD of demos and asked if I would be interested and I spent like, a month in my room memorizing every word to every single song and um, I think we sat down together for the first time to sing those songs on May 5th of 2009 and we sang the first song which eventually became the first song on our first record and I just remember afterwards we were both just like grinning from ear to ear and then I think like two months later I admitted to having a crush on him and then that, that Historically has not been a good idea. 
uh, it was an, it wasn't planned out or meant to be. Kenzie and I knew each other for two years before we even started uh, dating or the band. But um, yeah, we just started right when we started the band. Cliche, we started dating, and then uh, it, we, we were together for five years. After five years, we were like, you know, should we do that married thing that people talk about and that people hate? We're like, sure. The Young Evils teamed up with producer Shane Stoneback to create their debut Foreign Spells EP. Moving from their light-hearted start, they created a darker side combining 60s pop melodies with an 80s punk rock vibe. Songs like Dead Animals shows the band's ability to fuse these styles to make their music charming and gloomy all at once. You're gonna love it. We'll be right back with The Young Evils. Not like me, but I wish you were Wishing on this other world Dead animals Is what we'll become Dead animals Is what we'll become It's bad timing Everything you've done The cat of sweet illusions Got your tongue Dead animals so Scott is the newest drummer that we've had, and I love Scott's youthfulness, his ability to make everybody laugh and just to be a team player. Easily one of the best drummers I've ever seen play. Dad animals, it's what we'll Hi, I'm Scott Helgeson. I play drums for the Young Evils, and I also work at the very iconic Easy Street Records in West Seattle. Dead Animals is a classic. It was a song that I was you know, couldn't get out of my head before I was even in the band. Figured it all out. I used to hold it in, but now I'll shout. Dead Animals is what will become. I guess when the Young Evils did come out with their first record, I obviously had heard about it because I'd been working at Easy Street at the time. I remember it just being like at a time where, you know, bands like The Head and the Heart were starting to blow up and kind of attributed it, attributed them to that kind of caliber of musicianship. I was approached by Troy almost about a year ago and uh, he was like, you really want to play drums in the Young Evils? And I go, well, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what, what happened. We have two brothers in our band, the Helgeson brothers, that's their last name. So uh, Brendan we call Hellraiser, and Brendan is the older of the two, and Brendan is the bass player. My name's Brennan, I play bass for the Young Evils, and I make coffee when I'm not playing bass. I changed to bass in high school because nobody had a bass player. It's kind of how I think most bass players start nowadays in rock bands. I saw the Young Evils perform probably a little less than a year before I joined the band. It was awesome, you know, it was a uh, different music than I listened to at the time. They've kind of opened me up to a world of pop that, you know, I haven't really been paying attention to for a long time. While the chips still haven't fallen on the table Do we keep this all together and regret what we might be? Not going anywhere, not going anywhere There's
there's definitely a little bit of I feel like ESP or whatever you want to call it between me and my brother. You don't even like think about it anymore at all. It's kind of scary sometimes <laughs> to just be like on stage and be like, how did I just do that? That's weird. Brennan's, he's, he's the Hellraiser. I love him to death, you know? It's so cool to be in a band with my brother. You don't have to ever really think about anything, you know? I never have to look at him and go, what are, what are you playing, you know, and what am I playing? Like, we always just play, and whatever we play just locks in, and we don't have to think about it. I, I love it, I wouldn't have it any other way. Do we repeat that all together and regret what we might be? Not going anywhere, not going anywhere. Stick around, we'll be right back with more of The Young Evils. Michael Lee is the guitar player who moved over to guitar from bass. He's a way better guitar player than me. Walked on water, baby, but I've definitely walked on nails. Followed you around, but now I'm faded, and I know now that a ship has sailed. Hey, this is Michael Lee from The Young Evils. I play guitar when I'm not doing that. I'm operating a couple bars in Seattle. Waiting for you, but now. Another tragedy is kind of like our uh, spaghetti western of the False Starts EP. But when we danced on that sunny afternoon, I dreamed of life in perfect harmony. into the boards where our windows used to be the vulture circle round another tragedy like I don't know how to read music and I admire and respect all the people that do but also I feel like there's a certain freedom in not literally knowing how to transcribe things even though I um, you know I can figure out a song in a second I couldn't write it on the line, but there's a little bit of freedom that comes with that too, and you know, there's also a little bit of handicap. I haven't cared for a long, long time, so better than for Teratoba. But when we dance on that sunny afternoon, I dreamed of life in perfect harmony. We drive nails into the boards where our windows used to be. The vultures circle around another tragedy. There's a musical connection with everybody in the band, but then we're also, you know, very close as, as pals, and, and they are my family. At this point, it's like, I think Troy and I both kind of feel like there would be no Young Evils without Michael. And before it used to be like there wouldn't be a Young Evils without Troy and I. It's like me, Troy, and Michael. He has to be a part of it. Those are, we have a running joke that it could double as a zany sitcom pilot. Yeah, I've got the gay guitar player, the two brothers, and the married couple. Premeditated, complicated, understated, why I even left there at How do you know when you have a song that's a keeper? Uh, that is, uh, you just know. You just, you're, yep. Or when you show your bandmates or other people a demo and they're like, that one. You just kind of know, it's strange. And then there's ones where I think, I'm like, that, I really like this. And then other people just pass right over it. But it's whatever s speaks to you. I 
think if anything, I, I love all the dudes that I get to do it with, and I feel really blessed and lucky that anybody ever wants to come see us play. I don't feel different or estranged from them in any sort of way for being the only female. I, I just wish that it was something that more women felt like safe and comfortable to explore. Well, that's it for tonight's Band in Seattle. If you want to hear more, check us out on bandinseattle.com where you can hear full concerts and find links for more information about our bands and where they're playing next. Aaron? And to stay up with the latest in the music scene, check out my show, The Air Raid Podcast, on mynorthwest.com, cairoradio.com, and more on my website at www.air-raid.net. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle. And then yeah, the new releases, that's where you find the really good stuff. And then the really, really good stuff gets displayed up here. Like uh, an original, never mind, gold stamp promo. Gold stamp promo. 250 bucks. So uh, if you want to buy this for me. <laughs>